uh yeah thanks everyone for uh, turning out for the talk uh so yeah that was uh, that was some intro huh? uh let's see let's see if i can keep <laughs> let's see how far we go with this uh, so my name is raj work as technical evangelist for microsoft uh for microsoft it's green okay okay <laughs> uh so yeah so um, so this talk is uh, you know i kind of had difficulty thinking about a title for this talk so that's the best i could come up with uh, but basically what i wanted to do was uh, spend some time talking about you know what are some of the things that are there in uh, there in ie and generally on the on the microsoft side of things uh, you know that that enhanced developer productivity that's kind of the the focus of the talk uh, <clears throat> to to start off with uh, you know kind of wanted to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about experiences so this is sort of the agenda I don't have too many slides. Uh, I hope to keep it most of it. You know, like I just want to show you stuff. Uh, so, just want to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, experiences. Uh, some of the cool things that uh, you know that people have built. Uh, you know, some of them are out there in the Microsoft booth. Uh, you might have you know had a chance to play with that Atari game and things like that. <coughs> the cool thing is, all of that is completely standard HTML. Uh, you know, W3C HTML, right? Like it's just it's Canvas, it's CSS3, it's uh, it's JavaScript. So. uh just want to show you a few experiences like that uh then want to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about how you can build these kinds of experiences yourself right like uh, uh lately what are some of the new specifications that have come out uh you know like you know how you can do cryptography on the web today uh you know uh, how you can play professional video uh, professional quality video things like that so just want to show you a little bit of that and then you know probably a major chunk of the talk would uh, you know I, i would like to spend on uh, some of the developer productivity features in ie and visual studio So that's the uh, that's the outline of the talk. Uh, to start with, uh, just wanted to show you a few experiences. Uh, all right. So let me just uh, keep this on the side here. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing I wanted to show you was uh, was this experience called uh, Glacier Works. Uh, this is something that uh, Microsoft worked with uh, with this. Uh, uh, with this organization this ngo uh, you know who are kind of focused on uh, saving glaciers right so basically they kind of analyze the impact that uh, human activity has on the environment and they kind of try to uh, you know publicize it right so this is a, this is a site that kind of showcases that uh, in the himalayas <coughs> so uh, there's lots of stuff going on here uh, uh, and obviously there's a message here but i kind of want to focus on the on the experience so you know here is a here's like a like a 3d map here that has been created with uh, i think this is webgl uh, and it kind of takes you on a on a journey right like uh, from base camp all the way to the all the way to the top of the mountain you know uh, we might or might not be able to see this right now depending on the internet here uh, but if you guys have a chance to look at this you, sh you totally should this is explore.glacierworks.com uh, let's see if this thing loads So in this experience, essentially, what happens is it loads up this uh, this absolutely gorgeous photograph uh, from the Himalayas, and it allows you to kind of pan and uh, you know zoom through that. It's basically a, a panorama, so you can kind of get a 360 degree view of the place. Right now, it looks very dark. I know that, but uh, do you see that? I'm right now panning. Oh, there it is. Okay, it'll it'll eventually load. So. uh you guys should you guys should totally look at this right so this is just uh, this is just one part of it um so you can you know we were just starting at the this place called lukla and then you can sort of you know follow all the way up to the uh oh, this is up to the everest base camp right and then uh probably uh Off now, uh, and then uh, in the in the glaciers part of it, uh, there are a few uh, interesting videos that you can look at. It here is another experience which kind of showcases the uh, you know this is basically a, a contour map if you want to think about it that way. Uh, so it it kind of shows you not not a contour map. It it's a you know it's a model of uh, of that area, right? Uh, and then you can click on you know one particular uh, spot, and then it kind of goes there and gives you some information about it. Uh, There is another thing here called as flight to Everest. Uh, this is basically a basically a video that kind of takes you all the way from uh, base camp to the peak. Uh, 
uh, and then it goes on and on, right? So, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, it, it really serves to have a nice internet connection when you're looking at this thing. Uh, but basically, all of this is built uh, completely with uh, with web standards, right? So HTML, JavaScript. Uh, <coughs> the other experience I wanted to show you was uh, was this thing called as Explore Touch. Uh, hope I have loaded it. I kind of knew I would have internet problems, so I uh, loaded a few of them up. Maybe I forgot to load this one. This one I had it. Oh, there it is. So, uh, uh, could we turn the audio on? So, this is kind of a you know an experience that kind of showcases touch. Uh, the idea here is you have this, uh, you have all these uh, uh, little little discs that you can drag in, and music should be playing. Or if I unmute it. Let's do that again. So you can just drag these things in, and then it starts, uh, starts playing that music. You can, you know, kind of pinch out, and the whole, all of these guys go out. If I pinch in, uh, you know, if I and you can kind of jam with this. Uh, Nice speakers. Uh, <clears throat> so again, you know, completely, uh, completely. So this this uses pointer events, right? So that's a that's a W3C spec uh, that allows you to do multi-touch input on the on the web, right? So uh, so that's uh, that's another experience, right? So there's another uh, app that I put together called InstaFuzz, which I'll be using for uh, for all of my uh, all of my debugging demos. Uh, probably I'll uh, I'll quickly show you what that does. All right. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. So, uh, basically, here the idea is, uh, you know, it's 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 uh, it's kind of inspired from this app uh, called Instagram that you might have heard of. Uh, you know, this is an app that basically takes perfectly good pictures, makes them really really bad, and then you share it with your friends. Uh, so, this is what this app does. Uh, so, you know, I've just uh, added up added up. This, this is my nephew here, so I can sort of uh, go and apply different filters. I just made it black and white, or I can do all, all kinds of things, right? I can uh, can make it negative and all that. So uh, there are a whole bunch of filter effects that I've that I've added here, right? So I can I can add images like this. I can hit add and do that, or uh, I can just open my pictures folder uh, and uh, and get an image here. Uh, all I have is my picture, which I know will rapidly switch out of it. Uh, so you can see that I can do drag drop as well, right? So uh, if you know, probably if I had run this in full screen, it would have been difficult to tell that this is actually a web app, right? So we are able to do drag drop. There is a whole slew of uh, web technology that are being used in this app here. Uh, you know, I use drag drop. There's a drag drop API, W3C API. There is uh, uh, this canvas being used. In fact, all of these uh, things that you see on the left and in the middle, they're all canvas tags. Uh, there is uh, web workers being used. So when you apply a filter, the actual uh, filter is applied in a web worker and then it is rendered back onto the onto the screen. Uh, <coughs> what is? I know I'm forgetting a few. So uh, there are quite a few uh, uh, web standards used here as well. So I'll kind of use this app to kind of uh, you know look at look at the debugging uh, capabilities as well, right? So, uh, so that was like a very brief uh, look at some of the uh, some of the things that you can do with you know some of the experiences that are possible, right? So now with i11, uh, you know uh, we've joined the bandwagon. We support WebGL now, uh, so which is which is great news. Uh, so uh, and it is it is a secure implementation, right? So, so there were some concerns earlier about about how secure is it to take uh, shader code from the web, you know, and just run it on your on your hardware, right, on your GPU. Uh, and God knows, you know, what uh, what GPU you have installed, your code will actually run in <laughs> run directly by the by the GPU uh, driver, right? So uh, those kinds of issues have been kind of taken care of. Uh, there are a whole bunch of things that uh, that Microsoft does working working with GPU vendors to make sure that their drivers are audited and so on and so forth. 
for example, uh, devices that are known to cause trouble or have security vulnerabilities, uh, you know, when, when the browser detects that, it automatically disables hardware acceleration in that case, right. So, they do things like that to make sure that uh, uh, the user security is kind of, uh, kind of taken care of. Uh, so, one experience I want to kind of show here is, uh, is this thing, there is this uh, nice new library that, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, it's called Babylon JS. Uh, so, this is just a, this is kind of a showcase experience of, you know, the sort of things that you can do here. Uh, again, this is, uh, this is just plain WebGL, right. So, uh, it's pretty impressive stuff and if I keep doing this, I'm sure all of you will feel very pukey and then make a mess. So, I'll stop that. So, uh, so that's that. So, if you're interested in the security piece of it, uh, essentially what happens in IE is that uh, it kind of takes all the GLSL language and does a translation to HLSL and then actually uses DirectX to run the thing. And then they do security audits of, uh, I mean, it does a security verification of the, uh, of the SL shader language code as well. Uh, <coughs> cryptography, right. So, that's something, uh, that's something new. Uh, now, you can, you can do uh, pretty much uh, everything like, uh, you know, you can generate uh, uh, cryptographically secure random numbers, you can do hashing, you can uh, encrypt, decrypt stuff, you can verify signatures, all of this completely on the client using just plain JavaScript. There's a W3C spec for this web crypto. Uh, there's a full screen API, uh, pointer events. So, again pointer events is something that we just saw with the explode uh, IE experience. Uh, the same, uh, same thing is available for pretty much everybody, right. So, this is a multi-touch input uh, API. So, let's take a look at, uh, look at some of these. So, uh, so this is just a, I don't know, there's not much point showing this demo, uh, but you'll have to take my word for it here that uh, this thing actually encrypts things. Uh, so, for example, I can go here, pick an image, uh, I can say load and I can give, give it a password and I can, you know, uh, click here and then the thing gets encrypted, I can go and save it, right. Now, I can hit save uh, and then gets uh, saved to my folder here. Now, the thing is this thing that got saved right now is, uh, is encrypted. It's not the same P, not the same PNG that I used earlier. Uh, it's not the source image basically, right. So, let me just run zoom it here. Uh, so, I recently paved my machine. So, you know that's the file that got, uh, that got created right now. So, if I take off this bogus extension and try to open this file, you know, it will basically throw an error saying that it doesn't know what that is. Uh, and then I can, I can go ahead and decrypt it. Uh, I guess the, the demo itself probably isn't, uh, isn't that exciting. Uh, I can reload the page, hit decrypt and then, you know, I'll get the image back. But the basic idea is, you know, uh, pretty much a fully featured uh, cryptography stack now exists on the web, right. And again, this is a piece of spec, uh, you know, uh, adoption, you know, is there in i11 and other browsers as well. Uh, so, that's something that's pretty exciting. And in fact, that's kind of contributes to, uh, contributes to a, another spec, spec that we'll be looking at in the next slide, which is encrypted media extensions, right. So, another interesting API, uh, which I kind of find funny, is the full screen API. Uh, now, you can do things like this. Uh, now, you can say, you know, for example, I can say some button equals document dot uh, query selector of, uh, button and then I can say button dot request full screen. So, you can pretty much take any HTML element and make this call uh, request full screen. Right now, I am using a vendor prefix version because the spec is still in draft, uh, you know, but the, the web, uh, W3C name of it would be request full screen and turns out the browser is required to, uh, to show that particular element in full screen. You see that? That one button in full glory, full screen, right? That's a uh, that's probably not something that you would want to do, but turns out that, uh, you know, uh, this is now supported for scenarios where it makes sense, right. So, if you do this, if you call that method on a, on a video element, then obviously the video plays in full, uh, in full screen uh, and then you can customize that experience in various ways. Like for example, if you want to show a different background instead of the default black, you can go do things like that. Uh, so, again, this does it in a, in a secure way. So, that, you know, there's no flyby attacks and those sorts of things not possible because it always asks the user's permission before an app can switch uh, any part of the app's uh, client area into full screen. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was this, uh, was, you know, multi-touch. So, here again I have, uh, have IE11 running here and this is a sample that kind of shows how you can do, how you can do multi-touch. So, this particular device here supports uh, 10 input touch points. So, those uh, uh, points there, they, ref 
they they're basically my fingers so you can go do that uh, i know what some of you are thinking don't think that uh so here is a uh professional video right now this is possible uh, possible on the web today hey, wait a minute i have a clicker here somewhere there it is uh you can do professional video right so there's a specification called as media source extensions uh <coughs> this allows you to implement uh, adaptive streaming right again in a completely uh vendor neutral standards compliant way right so you can uh, you know uh, like you can completely implement an adaptive streaming protocol in javascript right so that's that's pretty awesome uh encrypted media extension kind of builds on top of that and allows you to play back uh, drm protected uh, media right uh, so this is again a wc spec uh, supported uh, you know for example netflix backs this uh, you know some is this backs this so in fact if you have a browser that supports this particular spec uh, and you have an netflix subscription which uh, none of us do uh, but if you are if you happen to live in the west uh, or if you have the software that allows you to pretend like you are in the us uh, then you can actually use this and uh, and it will be a plugin free experience right so it will so right now i think netflix uses silverlight plugins to implement drm uh, now there is absolutely no plugins required right so this just works uh, and rich captioning right so now there is a specification that allows you to uh, allows you to really use you know captioning that is very very rich so for example you can format your caption right uh, so here is a Here's a demo that kind of uh, showcases that this is all in IE test drive. Uh, just wanted to show you the captioning uh, piece here. Again, if uh, internet works out, we'll be able to see that. Uh, so you can see that you know there's a. I mean, it's it's. I think the internet is a little. offering here but uh, basically it allows you to do you know all kinds of fancy things with captioning right so you can specify where you want your captions positioned how you want those captions formatted what kind of background you want what kind of font you want to use you have complete flexibility uh, as far as uh, as far as captioning is concerned and it can be dynamic right it can respond to the content that's being uh, rendered in the video so you know for example if you feel that you know at a particular point in the video uh, the captioning kind of uh, con uh, kind of clashes with the content that's being rendered right uh then you can kind of uh move it around move it away right so that's uh so you can do things like that so uh so those were some of the uh, some of the new new things right the new stuff that has uh, that has come in the web uh, uh recently uh and stuff that are uh, all of these that that I just spoke about are all supported in i11 uh just want to spend the re remainder of the talk uh, talking about developer productivity so what are some of the uh some of the things that you can do uh to make your job as a web developer or you know as a javascript developer easier uh the first thing that i want to kind of talk about is this tool called modern modern ai uh has anybody here actually uh, heard of or used this modern ai probably about uh, about 30% of the of the room um i thought i had it open as well probably not uh so the the url is modern.ie uh so the basic idea here is uh you know uh, one of the things that we really wanted to address was the pain point of testing for older versions of ie right so uh uh in fact we had a we had a trouble with setting up our uh, our card swiping thing this morning at the at the microsoft booth uh it turned out that you know one particular ui was not working in ie 10 because uh and I, and was having a chat with uh, with mitesh you know the reason why you know he had never tested an ite right uh because he doesn't have a windows machine accessible to him so that's the problem we're trying to solve here right so uh <clears throat> so if you so this basically gives you a, a bunch of things uh one of the one of the things that it does is it gives you a uh, gives you this uh, automated scan so for example i can go type here uh, let's put uh, kiran on the spot uh let's scan uh, jsfood.in site so just go put the url of his site and uh, hit scan and then basically it goes and checks for common uh, compatibility you know issues that uh, that you typically find in different sites so uh uh 
And if you want to run it, uh, run it yourself. It's available on GitHub, so you can go ahead and uh, clone it and take a look at it. Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> ah, I thought I removed it. Maybe I didn't. Oh, it is a TPS. Okay. All right, so it seems to be scanning now. Um, I already did it. He's fine. There you go. So, uh, so all of those are okay. There's only one suggested enhancement here. Uh, it says that uh, there is one particular CSS where uh, where you might want to use other vendor prefixes. I think right now you're using only uh, only WebKit, right? So in fact, it tells you which file it is. So you can hover on this link. It'll tell you what file that is, and it tells you what selector it is, and then it gives you the gives you the thing, right? So in this case. All he has to do is uh, fix that up, provide the other vendor prefixes, including the W3C uh, name of linear gradient, and then you're all set. I think uh, I don't think there are any other any other issues there. Uh, since this is a Microsoft site, it'll tell you something about Windows 8 and all that, which you can do if you feel like doing. Uh, basically, it allows you to uh, you know uh, you can take advantage of Windows 8. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Windows 8 uh, tiles. So, for example, you see this thing here: this glacier works, Everest, rivers of ice. Uh, that's not an app. That's actually a link to a web uh, to a website, right? And it is a live tile, so you can push content onto your tile. That's simply a link to a site. All you have to do is put a few meta tags in your in your HTML, and then you can and it can be an RSS feed, and uh, uh, Windows will automatically go retrieve content from that feed and uh, use that to populate this, right? Populate the populate the live tile of your app. Uh, so that's the that's the suggestion here. If you want to do that, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, I ran this for my blog, and uh, the results were uh, something that I'm not going to show you right now. Uh, I have a lot of work to do. Uh, there's another thing that uh, they offer here. This is a pretty nice thing. It's a, it's a free service. They use browser stack. How many of you use browser stack? Quite a lot of you. So, folks who don't know, uh, browser stack is this uh, is this uh, service where you are you can go ahead and test your web application in all kinds of browsers in any permutation combination that you can think of, right? Like what does uh, my site look like in you know in a particular version of uh, iOS, right? Uh, what does that look like? So you can go ahead and check that out, or a particular version of uh, IE or a Firefox or Chrome, whatever the case is. They basically have this uh, farm of virtual machines that you can remotely access log uh, access log into and then uh, check out your site. If you're using modern IE, uh, they offer uh, three months free access for browser stack. So just go check it out. Uh, it's completely free and it's it's a pretty pretty awesome service, right? So you get uh, you get within the browser uh, a remote view of uh, of the target environment, right? So you can see what uh, uh, what your app looks like, web app looks like. This thing though is a free service. Uh, you can just go ahead and uh, hit begin scan, and what it does is probably I should have done that before I started talking because it takes a little bit of while, a uh, little bit of time. What it does is it goes ahead and takes a screenshot of your web application in various uh, uh, various clients, right? So on iPhone 4s, Google Nexus. Windows 8, iPad 3, Samsung Galaxy S3, and so on and so forth. And you can take the screenshots and see what that looks like, right? So this is something that you can do. Uh, beyond that, you can of course use Browser Stack uh, to do a full, full functional testing of your application. Uh, so it goes ahead and does that. Uh, another thing that I wanted to show you is this uh, tool called Compact Inspector. Uh, this is a little bit, you know, kind of what Modern IE offers, but uh, that that is something that you can run on your your servers, right? Uh, in fact, let me show you how that works. Uh, so I have a local copy of uh, of Instafuzz running here. Uh, I'll go ahead and open that. So Compact Inspector is this uh, this is tool that allows you to uh, check for compatibility issues in your application, and all you really need to do is uh, include this little script that you see here, right? So Put that in your page, and then it goes and does a scan automatically of of your application. So I go to my index.html here. Uh, probably it increase my font size a little bit here. So I'll go and make that a little big. Uh, so I'll go paste that little bit of script snippet uh, in my in my HTML, and then uh, as soon as I run it. Uh, you see this little thing that pops up at the, the top right. So that has been inserted by that script. What it did, what it did is it basically scanned the scanned the page for common compatibility problems. Uh, looks like there is one compatibility issue, and that is that 
the page is using jQuery 1.9.1. Check, verify to substitute the latest version. Okay. So it's recommending that I, you know, upgrade my jQuery library to a more recent version. Uh, so these are the tests that it ran. Uh, you can go review all those tests. Uh, you know, there are quite a, quite a lot of them. And then it gives you that gives you that little you know uh, suggestions, right? These are some of the compatibility issues that you're likely to run into uh, when you're trying to use your app, uh, your web application, and you want that app to run on you know on all browsers. Uh, so this is a pretty neat tool. So you can go check it out. It's called Compat Inspector, right? So uh, oh, and uh, there's one other thing that Modern I gives you. Uh, so you can you can get pre-built virtual machine images of uh, of various versions of uh, the wrong link there. Uh, up. Where is this? Test across browsers. So you see this thing here. Download a virtual machine for Mac, Linux, or Windows. So uh, basically, you can get uh, pre-built virtual machine images for all versions of IE, uh, all the way from six uh, to eleven, uh, <coughs> and you get virtual machine images that run in virtual various virtual environments. Right? Certainly on Windows with Hyper-V. Uh, on Mac, on Linux, uh, so there are images that you can go ahead and download, uh, which is a real, you know, which is a, which is basically a, a real pain point. And if you're if you're using a Mac, you can get a free 14-day trial here uh, by clicking on that link. Uh, so this gives you an, basically an environment, right, of of Windows XP or whatever is required for running that particular version that you are testing in. Hopefully, you're not testing for IE6, uh, but if you are, there's a VM for it. Uh, so that's that. So. Uh, the next thing I wanted to kind of show you was uh, was some of the uh, debugging capabilities in i11, right? So uh, I have a little cheat sheet of uh, demos here, so I just keep that open. Let me just get rid of all these windows. Yes, I want all the tabs closed. All right, so uh, with uh, with i11, let's get rid of the compat inspector script there. I don't need that anymore. Uh, with i11, we've kind of, uh, you know, really worked hard on the uh, on the F12 Dev Tools, right? So, uh, so this is the new Dev Tools that is there and that ships with i11, Internet Explorer 11. Uh, so, if you've seen the older ones, uh, this, you know, there's a there's a there's a world of difference here. Uh, so, many of the things that are probably things that are used to seeing. So, I can go uh, dock it to my window and then, you know, kind of uh, hover over things and it kind of highlights that. Uh, Oh, we have inspect element now. Finally, you can right click on, for example, I can right click on this thing, say inspect element. No, this was that painful, huh? Okay, so uh, so now you can do that. Uh, what else? You can you can. Uh, you know, this is kind of uh, funky. You can like move stuff around. Uh, before I do that, let me just load one image. Uh, I load my nephew here again. Uh, so you know I can I can do things like you know I can I can track this div and drop it up there and then uh, that thing moves up there as well. Just, just pretty neat. Yeah. So you can do things like that. Uh, on the right you see uh, see all the styles uh, for that particular element. Probably things that they are already used to. Uh, I find the trace tab uh, pretty useful. Typically when I see particular style being applied, I have no clue uh, uh, where that style is coming from. Right? I'm I'm going and changing this style, but the damn thing will not reflect on my on my element. Right? And I don't know why. So uh, trace styles is something that's useful for that. Uh, it tells you what are the winning styles. It tells you where that style is coming from, right? So uh, you can go and check that out. You can you can open that and it'll tell you that uh, this is coming from this particular uh, class, and then you know that's probably really small, and then it tells you where it is, uh, which is pretty pretty useful. Uh, computed styles uh, shows you that here the box layout. It tells you uh, for that particular element what is the width, height, uh, margin, border, padding, and everything. If you yes. Okay, so um, you were showing me font family in the uh, tracing styles. Does it show the actual font being rendered? That's my font. Sorry, does it show what? Does it show the actual font that was rendered? Let's find out. Let's see. So I have used a WAF font here uh, for the title here that says Insta Fuzz. Uh, let's go to trace. It says, yeah, it, it says. Uh, it rendered with Capria. Hmm? Okay. Would you know that? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it will do that. Uh, I, I know where you are asking that though. Uh, we had an issue with jsfoo.in, the site. Uh, all of a sudden it started rendering everything in Times New Roman. Uh, 
and there was this font which is not getting downloaded. So, here, uh, I don't know, I don't know if it does that. Does it show in the computed style? Uh, it shows the same thing there because that's a that's a winning style. Uh, one nice thing that it shows in the computed style is the losing styles, right? So that sometimes gives you an insight into why your style is not being applied because this thing is overriding that. Uh, can, can we try um, disabling the teaser regular and seeing if it still shows here? Just remove it from the DOM wherever you're loading it. All right. Some live experimentation on stage. How many of you done that? So, I'll go to my explorer here, I'll probably just delete that folder. So, that should fix that font. So, there we go. So, let's go to an inspect element there. Go to trace. Nope, it doesn't tell you that it's applying Cambria. Feature request. Alright. So, uh, so those are some things that you can do. Uh, so, I can You know what, I really hate using this uh, trackpad, but unfortunately I'm kind of constricted by space here, so I have to use that. So, um, alright, so you can look at events uh, as you might expect. Uh, so, I click on this, it tells you that there's a particular event and it tells you that, okay, the handler is in, J in jQuery, that's probably not very useful, uh, but there you go. Um, <coughs> so, that's uh, that's a few things that I want to show you in the in the DOM explorer. There are a whole bunch of enhancements that have come out in the uh, in the console, uh, which are pretty cool. So this is the this is the console here. Uh, one nice thing is uh, you can of course do document dot query selector, and you can see that uh, we get IntelliSense. Uh, so you can say query selector and go uh, you know uh, pick an element. Uh, let's say container, right? Now there is a shorthand for that. I'm so grateful for this. So I can do this now. I can just say dollar dollar uh, container, and then it goes and uh, goes and finds that container element for me. It's in the console, it's only in the console, yeah. So, <laughs> don't do it in your JavaScript, I mean in your source files. Uh, so, it's just a shortcut for document or query selector all uh, and then it gives you all the nodes and then you can uh, you can look at them. Uh, <coughs> the objects that it returns themselves are inspectable. Uh, for example, let's say I want to take a look at this guy here. Uh, right, so, I have plenty of canvas tags here, so that should be a safe bet. So, I'll just say dollar dollar canvas, right. So, I get a list of canvas objects in my DOM and then you can expand that. It's basically, you know, it's not just text, you can kind of interact with that. Uh, it's a mini DOM explorer within the console window, right, it's an inspectable thing. Uh, you can run uh, bits of JS here as you would expect. If you want to do multi-line, just click this little thing here and then you can run uh, multi-line or you can run single line code here. Uh, so, I'm sure all of you are familiar with console.log. Uh, there are a whole bunch of other things that have been added. Uh, for example, if I want to look at an object, right, and I want that object to be rendered to my console and uh, I want to, you know, uh, using the inspector in the console. Now, there is console.dir, just like how we have in Node. So, for instance, let me find a good place to do this. Uh, Alright. Alright, so, Schedule filter. Uh, I wrote this code and I'm not able to figure out what I've done here. <laughs> All right, so on apply filter, that's that. So here's the drag drop event. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So let's uh, do a console dot uh, oops, console dot dir of e here, right? So now. Uh, let me just, uh, now I'll have to do a drag drop. So, uh, go back to our pictures folder here, uh, get one of these guys. Uh, I do that and you see that as soon as the drag drop happened, uh, I got an object here, I can expand it, I can go look at all of its properties, I can see pretty much everything. Hey and hey look, uh, we have underscore underscore proto underscore underscore. Uh, so yeah, so you can do that. So that's uh, that's console.dir. Uh, yes. Uh, how long do we have? We have five minutes more. Okay. So then let me just skip to all the cool stuff. Okay. So uh, uh, this is something that I really really love. Uh, there is this thing called as the uh, 
Okay, UI responsiveness is pretty neat. Uh, there is a memory profiler that this thing shifts with now. Uh, so, for instance, uh, I'm doing fairly, uh, you know, uh, memory intensive operations in this particular app, right? I'm applying filters on every single pixel in every in, in the image. So, I'll start a memory profile here. Uh, I'll probably apply a apply a blur filter, and you can see that you know for a for a fraction of a second, memory use went up there, right? Uh, so, let's say I apply a, a motion blur. And then it goes ahead, and uh, it kind of visually tells you that you know uh, that something memory intensive is going on there. Uh, if you want to take a look at uh, memory diffs, so you can do a do a snapshot of memory. So at this point, uh, I take one snapshot, and then I'll probably uh, give it a second for it to uh, get the snapshot. Things have actually been pretty smooth so far. So let's see if this is the first demo failure we have. All right. Uh, let me do it differently. So, uh, you know, probably we'll give it some time. But essentially, what that does is it takes a snapshot of memory, and then you can do something else, like you know, something uh, where you are doing something memory intensive, and you want to do a diff, right? Uh, so, in this case, probably what I would do is I would get a snapshot. I will apply a filter, let the filter complete, and then take another snapshot. And hopefully, if I've written my code correctly, both of them there shouldn't be too many too much of difference, right? If I find that. Uh, there is extra memory that's there even after the filter has been applied. That means that there is a uh, there is a leak in my in my app most likely. Uh, but you know what the problem with this is? You have to be really uh, you know you have to be really nimble, right? So for example, depending on your app, you might have to be really quick about what you're doing in the UI, right? Uh, which might not be very practical. So it turns out the console API now supports uh, supports taking memory profiles. Uh, you can be very precise about it. You can actually go and instrument your code manually. And then you can you can get that. Uh, so how you essentially do that is uh, so let me look at my cheat sheet here. So for example, what I'll do is uh, I have this method here which uh, which is called schedule filter. Essentially, schedule filter uh, sends a message to my worker, and the worker does the actual filter. Uh, what I can do here is I can go and do something like this. I can say console dot uh, profile, and I can give it a profile name. I can say filter uh, running or something, right? And I think I have a Filter ID parameter here, so I'll go ahead and give that. And then once the uh, once the uh, once the filter has been applied, I want to see what happened. So once the filter has been applied, this particular uh, message will get posted back to my UI by the uh, worker thread. So I can go here and say console dot profile end. Right. So this is a way of you know uh, being very precise about how you want to take memory snapshots. Right. So let's go ahead and uh, add a picture here. Uh, so I start this, then I go ahead and apply one. Uh, or maybe this one. Hmm. What should have happened there is uh, I should have seen snapshots being uh, displayed there. I guess generally having a bad luck with memory profiling. Let's see if the code actually came. Debugging is disabled when profiling. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so uh, this message is coming because uh, a profiler is a kind of a debugger. So you cannot have a debugger and a profiler running at the same time. So since I'm trying to look at switch into my debugger tab, it's telling me that uh, I must stop all active profile sessions too. So the profiling is actually happening for some reason. It's just not showing up here. I think. Oh, uh, I, I I did the wrong thing. Uh, <coughs> I did a I did a code profiling instead of memory profiling. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, so maybe I'll just talk about code profiling then. Uh, so here you have uh, you have the profiler tab where basically every filter that I just applied it shows that. And uh, probably let me just uh, pop it out. So you can go ahead and take a look at you know what was the most uh, uh, expensive call that you made uh, in this particular uh, in this particular run, right? So you can be very precise about it. So you can go to your code and exactly say where you want that uh, where you want that code to be written. There is an equivalent. Uh, it's called uh, take heap snapshot. I use the wrong API. If you want to do memory profiling, you can go and call this console dot take heap snapshot, and that heap snapshot gets taken, and then you can go and do a do a diff. If you get a chance, take a look at the uh, look at the memory. I mean the UI responsiveness uh, profiler as well. It's really really uh, slick work here. Uh, it kind of tells you you know which part of the browser subsystem is really taking up time in a particular scenario. You can start the profiling, go do uh, what you want to do, execute your use case, and it tells you which process of system is using the maximum amount of time. 
Sorry, what was the question? In the profiler, user defined functions as well. Uh, so, I've completely run out of time. So, uh, there's another cool thing that I wanted to show you, which I unfortunately will not be able to show you, which is Visual Studio debugging. Uh, uh, things have, uh, you know, basically it's a, it's kind of a remote debugging experience. You can have the Visual Studio debugger running, and then you can have your browser running your web app, and there is an active connection between the two. So, you know, if for example, you know, one of the common problems is how do you debug a, a web app that's running on a phone, right? So basically, this uh, opens up a WebSocket connection between your web app with the debugger, and then you are able to uh, debug your applications. Pretty pretty nifty stuff. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, Complete our time. If you have questions, uh, we have time for take, one question. Take one question. All right, you get it too. So, what are the versions of Windows uh, which would get I eleven? So, I eleven will ship for Windows seven and Windows eight point one. Okay, so when would be in on Windows seven? Uh, right now, the preview is out. So, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, the product team typically does not announce dates and stuff, but I would imagine that. Uh, you know, in the next month or so, it should it should ship for Windows 7 as well. All right. So for Windows 8, uh, Windows 8.1 is a free upgrade. So, uh, so you'll get i11 through Windows 8.1. Uh, thank you very much. Everybody, big round of applause for Raj.